Hi, I'm Hannah Brown, and welcome to Better Tomorrow. My absolute favorite thing to do is have a heart-to-heart talk with my new friends and my best friends, where we sit down and talk about all the things like relationships and love, faith, and self-care. And of course, the little things as well, like the struggle to figure out what to eat tonight. All in all, I really want to ask, how am I better today than yesterday and bring artists, entrepreneurs, and friends along on the journey? So join me on the journey, will you? Hi, y'all. Welcome back to Better Tomorrow. I'm so glad that you're here. Today's guest, I'm so excited to be able to just personally be able to talk to her and for y'all to be able to listen in on this conversation. Uh, Jamie Kern Lima. Um, I love, I love just introducing you this way because I feel like it's amazing that you went from being a waitress at Denny's to a billionaire. Jamie sold her company, It Cosmetics. And yes, it's that it's It Cosmetics, your favorite CC cream, everyone's favorite CC cream, um, to L'Oreal for a billion dollars and became the first female CEO in that company. I love Jamie because she has used all her talents, all her blessings, her platform and influence to help millions through her keynote speeches, social media, um, and her best-selling New York Times best-selling book, Believe It. And she now has a new book out um, actually this week called Worthy, How to Believe You Are Enough and to Transform Your Life. I am so excited about it because I loved her first book, Believe It. Jamie, thank you so much for being here. Um, I just want to go ahead and just get right into it. Uh, You are a New York Times bestselling author and with your book, Believe It. And now you've written this new book, Worthy, um, that you have said is the best work of your life. I personally thought Believe It was amazing. So I want to know what's the difference of from this new book and your first book, Believe It, and what made you to decide to write another book? Yeah. So, you know, um, thank you so much, by the way, for having me. I am excited for our time together. I just love you and love everything you're putting out into the world. And so I hope Actually, I don't hope. I know this episode is going to bless so many people, and uh, and and hopefully be exactly what someone needs to hear today. Um, so thank you for having me, and yeah, believe it. Um, and thank you for those kind words. Believe it. Uh, my first book is really my story of kind of what you shared, going going from Denny's waitress to billion dollar entrepreneur, and sort of like all the ups and downs. And worthy is really the playbook on like how do you believe in you. So worthy is is uh, over twenty tools like that you can apply to your life right now and how to build self worth and 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 build belief and it's really this idea Hannah like for so much of my life I mean because it's it's and maybe you have you and I probably share this in common that people can Google our stories and then they can read the highlight reel <laughs> and then they see like they see all the things that people know us for and so. You know, in my situation, so many people think like, oh, did she just get lucky? Did it just come easy? Was it a fairy tale? She went from waitressing to, you know, building, you know, a thousand plus person company, all the things. And my real story is like a girl who like most of my life did not believe in myself and didn't believe I was enough. And, and, and through learning how to uh, is really how I even began to believe I was worthy of, of, of building a company or putting my ideas out there in the world. And so worthy is really for, you know, because right now, as you and I are talking, um, 80% of women don't believe they're enough. Uh, 75% of female executives deal with imposter syndrome and 91% of girls and women don't love their bodies. And so I really wrote worthy uh, because the time for change has come. And when we, every person listening to us right now, when you fundamentally believe you're not enough, it is a lie. <laughs> and it is time to unlearn that lie. And when you, you know, start to unlearn the lies that lead to self-doubt and then, and then kind of ignite those truths that wake up worthiness in your life, like the moment you learn to believe you're worthy is the moment future and past generations of your family change. It's the moment where, you know, literally every area of, of your life changes. So 
Worthy is really a book about for every person who doubts they're enough. And sometimes we can be like crushing it in the world, accomplishing all this stuff. Everything can look so great. But deep down inside, we feel alone and feeling like we're not enough. And this is a book about, you know, how to unlearn those lies, how to build unshakable self-worth. Um, and it kind of all is based around this idea that I believe is is a truth, which is uh, that in life, like we don't, we don't, in all areas of our life, really, we don't become what we want. We become what we believe we're worthy of. And and we can have all of these goals and dreams, but we we don't soar to the level of our goals and dreams. We stay stuck at the level of our self-worth. Like our self-worth is our ceiling. And so uh, I'm so passionate. I'm donating 100% of the proceeds from the book. I'm just so passionate about it because I think, like I'm imagining, even talking with you live right now, I'm imagining like the, like the number of, and this is for everybody, 73% of men feel inadequate and like they're not enough. But what fires me up so much is I think about every girl and woman who, when we learn to believe we're worthy, like the unhealthy relationships that will end, the ideas that will be shared with the world, like the businesses that will be launched, the bodies that will be celebrated, like mm -hmm. for the miracle in motion that they are. Like I am so fired up about this and so excited. And so um, yeah, self-worth. And, and by the way, self-worth is very different than self-confidence. Um, and, 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 and when we learn self-worth, it's just, it's just the one thing that changes every single thing in our life. So that is why I wrote Worthy for really for any person listening who has some self-doubt to destroy and a destiny to fulfill. Mm, which is all of us. I feel like it's so hard. Like, have you ever met anybody that hasn't had to go on a real long journey to actually feel that worth? It feels like there's so many things that happen in our life and we believe these lies over and over. I know for myself, same thing you said, like it could look like I was at the top of the mountain and there have been moments where I've been really struggling with my worth. And it's not really about those external things that those don't give you worth or happiness if you don't have it inside yourself. Um, and you said something, you write this in your book and you, you kind of mentioned it that you, you write in your life, you don't soar to the level of your hopes and dreams, but you stay stuck at the level of your self-worth in your relationships, career and ambitions. You don't rise to what you believe is possible. You fall to what you believe you're worthy of. And I was just like, oh, right to the gut. Like that is so true. And I want to know, like, how did you come to this realization and how have you seen this play out in your own life? Yeah, I am. Um, it's so funny, Hannah, that sometimes, um, and I love that we have different experiences, but kind of shared experiences. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it takes us accomplishing really cool stuff <laughs> that the world tells us is like, everything you could ever hope for to then realize, well, wait a minute, why do I still not feel enough even after accomplishing all that? And, and for me, it took, um, the bless so many of the blessings I worked so hard to get to realize that there's such a huge difference between things that build self-confidence, which is largely based on the external stuff and, and things that actually build self-worth, which is very different. And um, and, uh, and just to kind of share this, um, for anyone listening, maybe, because for me, most of my life, I thought, uh, I thought that if I could just achieve enough, uh, or just make enough people happy. And I was such a great people pleaser. If I could just, you know, all the things, especially if I could just achieve enough, then I would finally feel enough. And for anyone listening who maybe, has ever had like a goal or a dream and thought like once I finally get that thing, then I'll be happy. Then I'll feel fulfilled. Then I'll feel enough. And for some people, it might be um, something in their career or getting a degree or getting married or getting six pack abs or, you know, it could be any, a certain number of followers on social media or fame or 
a number in their bank account, you know, or the married and the white picket fence and three kids. It, it's different for all of us, but like for everyone listening, if you've ever had that kind of goal and you, and maybe you worked so hard to get it and you thought, you know, and think about something actually in your life right now, right? As we're talking um, and you thought, oh, once I get that, then I'm going to feel enough, then I'll be happy, then all the things. And so for a lot of us, we work really hard to get that thing, you know, sometimes months, years, or decades, and then we finally get it. And, 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 and for everyone listening, like imagine when that happens in your life, you finally get it. And then what happens for a lot of us, we're happy for like a month or a few weeks or a few hours. And before we know it, we're back to feeling like something's missing or like it's still not enough. And so then usually our solution is to work harder and to go the next thing and the next thing and all that. And going after your dreams is so important in life. And, and I am more, I am harder working now, Hannah, than I've ever have been. <laughs> like I am so passionate. I'm so fired up. Uh, but what I now know is when we're going after our dreams and our goals and, and then we finally get to them, that in that pursuit of them, we've built a lot of self-confidence, which is really important. We've been growing. We're often contributing to something beyond ourselves. But none of those things build self-worth. And none of the things that we want to accomplish and that we finally accomplish build self-worth. They all build a lot of confidence, but they don't build self-worth, which is why you still take you with you, whatever you accomplish. And self so many of us think, and I did most of my life until literally three years ago, self-confidence and self-worth are very, very different. And uh, uh, and understanding the difference, literally this one thing can change your entire life. This one thing can change your entire life because self-confidence is, while it's an internal trait, it's based so much on the external uh, on and it's fragile and it fluctuates. And our self-confidence is, is our own assessment of our skills and abilities. It's how we feel we stack up and measure compared to others. It's our willingness to try and go for it. It's how much of the world's definition of success we have. Um, if we're winning or losing at any moment, and like studies show like the, the boxer that wins the match is 30% more confident automatically. But our self-confidence is fragile and it fluctuates. Um, our self-worth is that deep internal knowing that we are fully worthy and enough and uh, worthy of love and belonging exactly as we are not as we achieve, not as our past mistakes or failures. Uh, and it's it's unwavering. And, and the two are very different. Like self-confidence is sort of like the house we build in, 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 of everything in our lives, but our self-worth is our foundation. Mm -hmm. And we can only ever be as strong and secure as that foundation underneath the house. And it's really um, the one thing that, that changes everything. And for, uh, you know, for people that have and struggle with self-worth, um, maybe who are listening now and they're like, well, how do I know if I am struggling with it? Self-worth, when we struggle with it, usually shows up in three ways. Um, and, and Hannah, for me, like I was at the height of my success, having this incredible stuff happen in, in my life. And I was still sabotaging stuff and still didn't feel like I was enough. And it took that for me to realize, oh, wow, I've built a whole lot of confidence. I'm crushing it. All this stuff on the outside is so great. But deep down inside, I don't still feel like I'm enough. And when we have self-worth uh, struggles, which is really why I wrote Worthy uh, uh, to give tools on what to do about this, but what it looks like for, for everyone listening is if we have low self-worth, um, often it looks like we're, we're stuck, like we'll stay stuck. Uh, in certain areas. So maybe like anyone who's like, oh, I, I really want to have a partner in my life, but you don't know why you're not getting on the dating app or why you're not going out there. Or it looks like um, I have a book inside of me. I want to share my story with the world. And you don't know why you haven't written the first word yet. Or it can look like, oh, I have, you know, fitness goals, but I'm just not ready to like start walking every day. Whatever it is, we stay stuck in, in different areas. We don't apply for the job that we know we want, or we don't register the domain for our business idea. Like we stay stuck and we think, we tell ourselves stories like, oh, once I get more experience, then I'll, or once I get more skills. And really the underlying reason is we don't believe we're worthy 
of that thing. And so we stay stuck and then think it's other things. Um, so that's one way. If you have low to medium self-worth, what that looks like is you'll go for the thing, like you'll, you'll go after it, but then you might sabotage it along the way. So you might start, you know, you might put yourself out there in the dating world and then you meet like a really great guy and you decide to put him in the friend zone and you decide you're not attracted to him and you don't know why. And you think it's because, oh, I want someone more edgy, more bad boy. But then deep down inside, we actually just don't, we, we are attracted to what we're familiar with. We're attracted to, to a reflection of how we feel we're our own worth. Like the amount, of, the amount and depth of love we love ourselves is the limit of what will be attracted to you and the amount of depth of love in, in someone else. Um, so we'll go for things, but we'll sabotage them. We'll, we'll build our business or ideas to a certain level. And then we won't know why we hit a ceiling because our self-worth is our ceiling in every area of life. Uh, and then if you're someone that has like medium to high self-worth, but it's still a challenge for you, what that looks like is you'll go after the thing, you'll accomplish it, you'll achieve it, you'll get the thing. But then when you arrive at it, you still feel like it's not enough and you still feel like you're not enough. Um, so that's really the three main ways that it, that it shows up. And the, the thing I want to say to you, Hannah, is like building self-worth and, and believe, learning to believe you're enough exactly as you are. It doesn't curb your ambition or any of that. It just makes you like actually more ambitious because you're not worried about, oh, if I fall flat on my face, if I embarrass myself, like, okay, it might shake my confidence a little bit, but it cannot touch my self-worth. So building that strong sense of self-worth, it just it impacts every area of our life. And it allows us to get the things we want so badly and actually be happy and fulfilled um, and feel enough when we accomplish them. So it's really just that one thing that changes everything. I um, feel like this book is coming at a perfect time for me in my life. Just like vulnerably, I feel like. I could kind of put myself when you're talking about those levels of, of worthiness, like I have, I've started to become more aware of, I don't think I'm one of those people that won't go after something, but I do have those moments of realizing that I'll pull back or self-sabotage, you know, I'm in that medium, maybe high sometimes, like I've, I've had those achievements. I've had that confidence boost. And that was so interesting what you're saying, the difference. I never really thought about the difference between self-confidence and self-worth. So I've seen all these things really play out in my life, but it's so hard to figure out. And there aren't that many tools or the, people have not created what you created for us of like, well, how do we build on that worthiness to where we are unshaken by things because I love how you also brought up the boxer analogy of like gosh if we were if we really let the world tell us who we are up and down I've been I've been on personally been on high pedestal so of you but I've also been knocked down and I have let because my self-worth was not built up the way that I believe that we're all called to live in that worthiness that we, it's our, like it, it's an inherent trait that we all have that we sometimes don't claim, I feel like. And I definitely haven't, like I have really seen the way that just relying on my self-confidence and not understanding my self-worth, how that can constantly keep you in a life of just a roller coaster up down limbo cuz because there's nothing that's like holding that foundation. So I love how you really brought that picture to life to me about like self-confidence is the house that you build and all the rooms that you make mm -hmm. and how pretty you decorate them and the the beautiful lavish pieces inside. But if that foundation is not there, that house can just crumble as soon as some, the next storm comes in. So I don't know, it's just that really gave me a strong picture. And I think it's something that I'm actively working on as well. Um, I know. I know what you mentioned you're in the middle, like you, like you'll go yeah. for stuff, but then you might say, um, can you share a little more about that? Like in your life right now? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I have, 
sometimes it's hard for me to sometimes receive the accomplishments and even us talking like right before um, we started recording, like even hearing you, somebody I look up to so much, be like, wow, you're doing so much in the world. And even when I have like people come up to me and be like, wow, listen to your podcast. You're such an inspiration, such a joy. I tend to, it's, it takes me a little, a little bit to receive that because I know the internal thoughts that I'm having along the way. And I think that's the worthiness that I'm still trying to build in my life, but also receive in my life. Um, and yeah, I have different dreams and goals and different types of products that I want to make. But I think just like you, like I, I've never done this before. I don't know how to do it. And now there's a camera and a microphone and this and that in my face while I, you know, try to climb this ladder to my dreams and things that I want to do. And it makes it scarier, that fear of failure, rejection, that much scarier when there are more voices and eyes on you. And that kind of go, and so that's kind of where I'm at right now. I've definitely, I've talked about this on the podcast. I just recently got engaged and it's been a harder season than I thought it was going to be. And I came to this deep realization you kind of talked about of like, um, this relationship's so different for me than a relationship I've ever been in before. And I actually told him one day, I'm like, you know, the way that you love me, I've realized that I resent you for it because I don't know how to even, cause I don't love myself that way. Mm-hmm. And I'm to the place of, sorry, it makes me emotional. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really awesome and good start to be aware of that. Yes. Um, Sorry. Um, and now I need to really believe that. Hannah, what you just shared, this is so powerful. Um, I hope, I think everyone listening can connect with this. And this is, this moment is so important, what you're sharing right now. The fact that you're aware of this is huge. A lot of times we cannot let someone love us. We can only let someone else love us to the depth of love and connection we have for ourselves. And when those two don't match, we'll sabotage it. We'll push the person away. We'll do something to, 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 to not accept it or attract it into our lives. And you're at such an important life like life impactful moment right now that you recognize this, that you have someone in your life loving you at what you just shared feels almost disproportionate to how much you love yourself. Um, And this is like the most critical moment because I think in your soul, I know you, you know, you deserve like unconditional, incredible love um, as does every person. And so, uh, doing the doing the work of of learning to love yourself is the most important life work it's like the more and as and as girls and women we're like raised thinking oh self-care selfish or self-love is selfish or let's just lose everyone else make everyone else happy and it is a lie because it puts us in a spot where when we don't love ourselves we're so tempted to push away or not receive or not be attracted to people that love us well. And like for you to articulate that moment right now in your life is so massive because there's going to be so many people also listening who are in that spot. And maybe, maybe, maybe they're, maybe they don't have this kind of love that feels incredible. And, but maybe they realize that they've been attracting people that don't love them well. Mm-hmm. And maybe this will be the moment they realize that often when we do that, it's a reflection of just the amount of love we have for ourselves. Like we often will attract someone who loves us at the level that we love ourselves. And so I am so grateful and so um, 
optimistic and happy for you uh, that you have someone loving you the way you deserve. And the journey now is you loving you the way you deserve. And there are so many, um, you know, we, we started talking about this in the beginning, but there's so many lies that lead us to self-doubt that lead us to believe we're not worthy of these things. And then there's so many truths that once we tap back into them, like we wake up our, our worthiness and help us really rebuild that self-worth because the most beautiful thing is, you know, you'll always hear people that write books about certain topics and it takes forever to learn them and whatever. Self-worth, like every single one of us, everyone listening right now, I don't care how many past mistakes, how many failures, how many you know, ups or downs or achievements or not, or whatever, none of that's relevant. Every single person is fully worthy, it's fully worthy exactly as you are. And there's actually nothing you need to do to change that. You just have to unlearn all the lies <laughs> that makes you believe you're not. I love how, I mean, you, I know your faith is super important to you and is um, a big part of how we find our worth. Um, I know for, for myself as well. And I, I would love to hear your thoughts about, about faith and self-worth. But one thing I did hear you say um, is, you know, and I totally agree. There's so many of us that say that we believe in God, but we doubt ourselves. And how can those, those, that's like, how can those two things be true in our lives? Like, who are we actually doubting? I love that. Can you explain more on this? Yes. Because there's a lot of people listening um, that would say that they believe in something bigger than themselves, but can also relate to where I'm coming from too of, but I still don't love myself the way that really matches up to what I say I believe. Yes. Yes. I love that you have done your homework and that you <laughs> like know all these key takeaways from worthy from the book, because, uh, you're able to ask these questions that go really deep. And this was a huge realization in my life. So two things I'll share when I, you know, I launched it cosmetics in my living room and Hannah, the first three years I got hundreds and hundreds of no's. And I was trying to, you know, do things different in the beauty industry. And I had, you know, I have hereditary rosacea, which is like bright red and bumpy and there's no cure. And I tried everything and I, uh, you know, was close to getting fired as a news anchor because of my skin issues and whole thing. And I just had this vision, like at the time, uh, all the models for any beauty company were all very similar flawless skin. They all look like they were 12. Like, all, you know, it was very, and I was like, what if we put, you know, real people like every age and shape and size and skin tone and skin challenge and all the things. And everyone was telling me, no, it would never work. And, and I went through years and years and years and years and hundreds and hundreds of no's. And most people, I mean, we were teetering on bankruptcy for the longest time. And a lot of people know the outcome now, but they don't really realize like, oh, wow, like, oh, I know it cosmetics is in Sephora and Ulta and QVC, but Sephora said no for six years straight. Wow. Um, Ulta said a QVC, all of them said no for years. And, uh, and so many of us will give up after one no or five no's or 20 no's, or we let other people's no's somehow equate to our own doubt, or we think that they're some indication of our lack of potential. Uh, and there's just so many lessons I learned a lot along the way around this and in particular around um, how to handle rejection and failures and fear. Cause you, you were bringing this up a second ago, fear of failure, fear of rejection. Uh, and there's a whole chapter in Worthy called when you change your relationship with rejection, you change your entire life. And it, it, it literally helps everyone because I had to, the only way I was able to go from like my living room to a billion dollar company, but, and endure all those years of hundreds and hundreds of no's is learning how to totally change my relationship with rejection and fear of it and fear of failure. Um, and so I go deep into how, how everyone listening can do that in their life, like right now in the book. Um, but in terms of, um, your question about faith. So two things. Uh, I remember one painful rejection in building at Cosmetics and we had gotten no's from everybody. And I just like, I don't know how we're going to stay alive as a business. And 
oh my gosh, I finally got a phone call that I was like, this is going to change my life forever. It was this potential investor. Um, and I think you probably know this story, but just to share it with anyone who doesn't know, he ran this huge private equity company. And I was like, oh my gosh, if they invest in us, A, we're not going to go bankrupt. And then B, maybe he could use his leverage to like get us into all these stores that keep telling me no. And um, like I used to save my Denny's tip money to buy like a lipstick in Sephora or in the department. You know what I mean? And I was like, I had these huge dreams and they were all telling me no. And so I was so excited. I was like, maybe he's going to invest in all this stuff. And so we started taking meeting after meeting after meeting. Um, and it got down to the final meeting. And at the very end, I was like, you know, this is going to change my life. I had these, I was praying like crazy. And, uh, and the head, and we were in person for the final meeting and the head guy was like three feet from me. His whole team was there. They were really awesome. Um, and the head guy says to me, after I presented our whole future product pipeline, everything, he says, uh, you know, you should be so proud, like, congratulations. This is a really great product. You should be really proud, but it's a no, we're going to pass on investing in it cosmetics. And by this point, I had heard so many no's and I was like, okay, can you tell me why? Mm -hmm. Because feedback is usually a gift. And he just got really, really quiet. And he says, do you want me to be really honest with you? And I'm like, yeah, like, yes, please. And I remember the moment his, his mouth started moving and he says, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you with your body and your weight. And when he said those words, first of all, I never actually felt any anger toward him, but I felt like this lifetime of body doubt and self-doubt like flood my body all at once. And it felt like I was like staring my own fear straight in the eye when he was saying this. But, the, but why I'm sharing this story was a pivotal moment in my faith journey. So when he said those words to me, I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you with your body and your weight. Like, I, I'll never forget this. Like, I can feel it like it was yesterday. I got this feeling, like, deep down inside in the pit of my stomach that said, he's wrong. Like, I felt it so clear that he's wrong. And I didn't know how I was going to prove it, but I felt it. And when I look back on that experience, now I went in my car and cried my eyes out. But when I look back on that experience, because those words like would replay in my head over and over in the next several years while I'm still just trying to get this business off the ground. And uh, what I realized happened in that moment, because I got that feeling so strong in my gut and every one of us has an intuition, no matter what you believe in, God, the universe, does not matter. Every one of us has an intuition. For me, when I pray, it's how I hear God is through my intuition. Um, every one of us has an intuition. And what I know happened in that moment is this guy gave me a no, but I got that feeling. And so like he gave me a no, but God gave me a knowing. Mm. Wow. Our, our life, our relationships, if we're in the right job, if we're in the right friend circle, if we're in every, literally I think everything in our life comes down to which one we listen to. Do we listen to the no's or do we listen to the knowing? And you shared this so beautifully because I think so many people will relate to this is that so often we're the ones giving ourselves the most powerful no's. We're the ones saying the most hurtful no's to ourselves. You can have people all around you being great, but we're the ones looking in the mirror and being like, I'm not enough. I don't have what it takes. I, all the things, right? And, and, and so, so first of all, the same question goes for, for us, for you, for me, for all of us. Okay, we're telling ourselves all these painful no's. But if we get still, if we pray, if we ask, we will get a knowing. And it, our, our, the no's we tell ourselves, those are in our head. Those are where self-doubt lives. That is not who we are. Our knowing is in our gut, in our soul. And that's the truth. For me, that is how I hear God. That is how I hear my intuition. And our knowing is always more powerful and always more true than anyone else's advice or than the knows we are telling ourselves or the knows anyone else's. So, so a big thing in moments when we're doubting ourselves is to like check in and go, okay, is this the truth in my soul telling me this? Or is this my self-doubt in my mind, which is a lie? And it's almost always a lie. And then we have the decision of, well, which am I going to trust? Which am I going to listen to? Um, 
And in, in the book Worthy, like there's over, you know, 20 different tools and lies to unlearn and tools to apply. And one of those tools is the chapter you just mentioned, which is called, Who Am I Doubting? Um, who, who am I really, who are you really doubting? And it is the, it's a chapter about faith. And uh, so many people, maybe you trust the universe always has your back or you practice a particular faith. For me, I'm Christian. I believe in God. And I had this huge moment where I realized in my life, and this is relevant to anybody who doubts they're enough, who thinks that they don't like what they look like or what their body looks like, or they don't feel they're worthy of walking into the room or they're unqualified or any of the things that we believe. I had this moment where you know, I feel like, oh, I, I really believe God's word. I believe I'm fearfully, wonderfully made in his image. I believe I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I say I believe all that, but then how am I doubting I'm enough when I'm about to walk into a room? How am I thinking uh, I don't like how I look? How am I thinking I don't have what it takes and I'm unqualified and all the things? And what I realized is, oh, wow, when I believe my own thoughts and my own self-doubt like when i have self-doubt and this is for any of us when we have self-doubt what we're actually doing is believing our own thoughts and doubting god's word mm -hmm. and so i started going oh wow okay i actually don't have self-doubt i have god doubt because i'm trusting myself <laughs> I don't have so I have God doubt and I'm like okay who do I want to believe do I want to believe my own self-doubt or do I want to believe God's word and what he says about me and how I have everything it takes and I'm wonderfully made in his image like like do which do I want to believe and so it is one of the tools now I apply to my life that's and and for for anyone who has a strong faith this is an instantaneous self-worth shortcut <laughs> because any room you're tempted to feel like you don't belong in, if you're Hannah Brown walking down a red carpet, any red carpet you're tempted to feel like you don't, any business you're tempted to feel like, oh, what if people see me fail? Any, any self-doubt that you're tempted, right? For me, I will intercept it in a second and be like, am I going to trust my own thoughts and self-doubt or am I going to trust God's word? And I will remember in that, I will make the decision that I'm going to trust him in that moment. And then I walk into a room knowing who's walking in with me, knowing whose I am, knowing whose image I'm made in, knowing who's in me. It is an instant like identity level um, self-worth hack and really quick way to silence everything. Because at the end of the day, you know, I mean, it really is, self-doubt really is for, for people with strong faith. It's really just God doubt is what it is. And so for a lot of people they are like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> and then it all of a sudden becomes way easier to just decide who are you going to believe in that moment. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very, um, a very powerful thing. In building it cosmetics, I had to learn literally to completely, completely change the meaning I attached to rejection and failure to one that was actually empowering and inspiring, which sounds like crazy to hear me say it that way, but it's so possible. And, and when we, and when I did that, I was able to like go for things in the, in a way where I was fearless of if I got rejected or failed. Um, there was one day I was so, I was crying under my covers after a painful rejection, another painful rejection. And I just started Googling everyone I admired most in the world who'd like done incredible things and, you know, helped heal humanity through love or built incredible businesses or inspired the world. Every single one of them has had so many rejections and failures. They're just the brave ones willing to keep going anyway. And I remember one day in my journal, I wrote out rejection no longer means I'm not enough. Rejection means this is a victory. I'm one of the brave ones willing to go, like, keep going. I'm not going to live my life on the sidelines, living in regret. Like, I'm going to make this decision that every time I get rejected, of course, initially my neural pathways in my brain are going to go, yep, there's proof you're not enough, but I'm going to intercept it and go right into like, this is a victory. I'm one of the brave ones willing to go for it. And I started retraining my mind around this. And I started building this toolbox of new definitions. So another one is like rejections, God's protection, like everyone that started coming in my life. And 
I learned how to become fearless over rejection and failure. And literally, when it happens to me, feel joy, which I know sounds wild, but it, and there's so many issues in my life, Hannah, that I'm working on, but I can tell you with 100% certainty, I am fearless about rejection and failure. And I go deep into how to do this in Worthy in the book. And I also talk about how to revisit past rejection. And this, this one is the biggest one in our lives is so many of us have had people hurt us, let us down. We've let ourselves down. We've failed. We've made mistakes. We've hurt people. We have regrets. There's so many things from the past that we are still holding on to, like big labels on us at an identity level. We so often let them take root and then we think, we're a failure or we're rejected. Like it's, it's a big thing. And so I go into how to revisit like past rejections and redefine those as well. And, you know, there's a lot of examples I give in the book, but just to share one, um, for the sake of time today, just for anyone listening, uh, if you've had somebody break your heart or maybe somebody like who did not love you the way you needed to be loved. Maybe if it's even growing up in your family or still, or a friend that just betrayed your trust or someone who pulled the rug out from under you, or it could also be something recent, like applying for something and not getting it. And you wanted it so bad. And like, they didn't see your value. or didn't see your worth, or it could be not being invited to a party or trying to make friends with this group of people. And someone just doesn't like you. And you don't know why, no matter what you do. So, I talk about how you like like the tool about about um, revisiting any of those and, and redefining what they mean and 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 how to build a whole toolbox of assigning meaning to those things. And so my favorite one of all of them, I go in a bunch of them in the book, but my favorite one of all is I will look at situations like that in my life right now, and I will literally instead of thinking, "Oh, I'm rejected, I'm not enough," whatever, I literally imagine God saying to me, "Oh." you're not rejected. I hid your value from them because they're not assigned to your destiny. And I will believe it, Hannah. I will believe it at my core and it helps me build resiliency and, 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 and a fearlessness around it. And it helps me not let those things take root at a self worth level. So there's so many tools we can apply to our lives right now that literally change it because I'm sitting here talking to you and I want to like jump inside your body and be fully fearless about all the things you want to go after because who cares if you fail and fall flat on your face? Like, like all that, that only means the meaning we attach to it. That's it. And you have the power to decide what meaning you attach to that. And when you become fearless over it, like that is when you become unstoppable. Like that's when you become unstoppable. So I'm, I'm like fired up right now about everything you've got going on and I'm excited for it. <laughs> I, I agree and will believe everything that you've said. I think that is such a cool way of reframing what rejection is that like God was, what did, how did you say it? God is hiding. Yes. What, 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 yeah. I'd say that again. Cause I was like, that is like spot on. Yeah, I believe God hides your value from people who are not assigned to your destiny. Destiny. So yes. and someone does not love you back, when the job didn't say yes, when the person does not invite you to the party, when it, it, no matter how hard you try, like whatever, I now believe, oh, no, no, I'm not rejected. Like, like I imagine God saying, like, I just hid your value from them because they're not assigned to your destiny. And I believe it. And by the way, over time, it always proves to be true. How many of us have dated somebody that we wanted to work so bad? And now we're like, thank God it did not work. Like, or it could be like, we wanted that job so bad, but like, had we gotten it and stayed in that profession, we wouldn't have taken this turn and this wouldn't have happened. Or, you know what I mean? It's like, we can look back and go, okay, my steps are ordered. My life is divinely orchestrated. And I am going to choose to believe that that was not rejection as some indication of my worth. That is God hiding my value from them because they are not assigned to my destiny. And it's always true over time. That is so powerful. I am. So, I, w- I could talk to you for hours, but I'm so excited about this book. And I feel like anybody listening today, like, 
this is just the surface of what we're all going to be able to learn in worthy and be encouraged and inspired by. And I'm seriously like just so inspired by, gosh, you have done so much and have reached this level of success, but that you um, have chosen to continue to use all your blessings to bless other people when like you don't have to, you, you don't, you don't need to pour into all the hours that it took to write this book and to have the proceeds. I mean, you're, you're 100% of the proceeds for this book are she's giving away. Like that is incredible, but that you have this life of purpose to be able to like use the story, um, that, God has given you and all the lessons that you've learned, the, 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 the victories and the times that you fall on your face to help other people. Like it really is inspiring. And, um, I'm just so glad that I got to talk to you and share, um, just all your truths that you are helping other people uncover for themselves. Um, y'all worthy is out now. You can go ahead and order wherever books are sold. Um, thank you so much, Jamie, for coming on and speaking with me. And you know, Hannah, I, uh, one thing, the last thing I'll share too, is for everyone who does grab a book, the only thing I'll ask is if once you're done with it, can you give your book to another girl or another yes. woman? Uh, this, this is a thing. And I think we can, like when I hear, when I know that 80% of women don't believe they're enough, like literally the time for change has come like no girl no woman no person left behind and i made this library card in the back of the book like old school library card we can write your name and then write the name of another woman you pass your book to uh because i just believe like that together we can truly change the world especially when girls and women learn to believe that that they're worthy i think so too well thank you so much this was awesome so great. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you guys so much for listening to the episode. Better Tomorrow is produced by me, Hannah Brown, and Legos Creative. Our producer is Andrew Stalmer. Our show is recorded, engineered, and edited by the Legos Creative team. Remember to follow Better Tomorrow wherever you get your podcast so you don't miss the next episode. And don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps and shows your support. You can follow me on socials at Hannah Brown and you can stay updated on all things Better Tomorrow on our Instagram at Better Tomorrow and our TikTok Better Tomorrow podcast. Mm-hmm.